I want it. I, I it, they yeah, say bring the takes. Trevor Lawrence number one gets so boring. I want everything <laughs> on me. I want you. I want you saying Malik Willis number one since 2018. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our episode of Boom or Bust, the draft show. Max Chabrick alongside Tate Sigworth and Nick Miriam. So, no longer PJ. It's the first time we've had a four-man show with no PJ Clark. We replaced him with someone better. Donnie Clemens from Pick and Spreads himself on TikTok. He's got like 16,000 followers on TikTok. He is a dog on that app. Donnie, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Thank you guys for having me. I don't know if I'm an upgrade from PJ because PJ is kind of irreplaceable, but... I mean, yeah. shoot, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, he's, Don't he's give pretty, him compliments. Don't give him play. compliments. He's, he's, he's the running back of the Boomer Bust draft show. <laughs> um, so we... League minimum. With Donnie on, we had to, you know, go all out and get, a, and get a sick video. So what this is, for all of you people who are wondering, you know, okay, so I know the top guys, but how good are these top guys in 2022? This video is kind of comparing them to the prospects from 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, we're ranking the top guys at quarterback with Rattler and Howell. So all the guys we did a video on, quarterback, uh, Evan Neal, so the tackles, who are the top tackles since 2018, including Evan Neal. Uh, DeMarvin Liao for defensive tackle. Kayvon Thibodeau for edge. Derek Stingley Jr. for corner. Kyle Hamilton for safety. We're doing that. We're ranking these guys because all four of us have been watching the draft for a while. We all have rankings that go back past 2018. So this is going to be a fun video. I'm really excited for this one, see where we think they stack up in those past five drafts. Before we start the video, like and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to follow our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Boomer Bus Draft. Also follow Donnie's TikTok, too, at Pick and Spreads. The guy is elite. He posts videos daily almost on TikTok. YouTube, anywhere you get your podcast, check out the merch store below. And the thing that Donnie, the only reason Donnie came out on this show is for me to do this right here. And that is play this, the Manscaped. Here we go. Do you like playing with balls? No, I'm not talking about footballs. I mean your balls. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leaders and below the waist grooming, want you to shave your pubes with the Tom Brady of ball trimmers. That is high praise. And you know what? They deserve it. The brand new. Lawnmower 4.0, only the GOAT technology for the greatest balls of all time. When you're going towards the end zone, make sure you use the right tools for the job and choose Manscaped. Two million and four men worldwide trust them. So join the movement with our exclusive offer by using the code BOOMERBUST. That is BOOMERBUST, all caps, no spaces, at manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping again. Boomer Bus, all caps, no spaces, manscaped.com. You get 20% off and free shipping, which is a steal on Manscaped. Take your ball defense to the promised land with Manscaped. We've got to get a Manscaped deal for Donnie soon. We're going to have to, like, we're gonna have to uh, <laughs> message Dom. We're going to have to message Mr. Palumbo and see if we can get Donnie on that for pick and spreads because I know he loves the ad reads. So let's start off with these quarterbacks, guys, because this is going to be an interesting class of quarterback. There's no – superstar quarterback prospect. Donnie, I'm going to start with you, man, because I know you got some hot takes for this one. Give me your quarterbacks list with Spencer Rattler and Sam Howell included from 2018 through 2022. So I'd imagine every single one of us is going to have Trevor Lawrence at number one, obviously. I mean, at least I would figure. Uh, number two, I am Kyler Murray. Um, I was a huge Kyler Murray fan when he was coming out of college. Um, number three, I got Joe Burrow. No, no explanation there. Number four, I have Zach Wilson. Okay. And number five, <laughs> number five, I got Malik Willis. Oh, oh, oh. oh big bang, Malik bang. Willis fan right here. And then at uh, number six, I have uh, Spencer Rattler. Okay. Well, then where does Howell fall in that top ten for you? Howell falls all the way down to ten. So who was who were the guys after like before? Um, so at seven I have Trey Lance. At eight I have Justin Fields. At nine I have Tua turn the ball over. And then at ten I have Sam Howell. Dude, Malik Willis QB one. I love that. We didn't even we said I told Donnie I was like Donnie just rank him with Sam Howell and Spencer rather included. He goes no 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 no. I got another guy QB one. I got Malik Willis who I have as QB three. You guys don't have as QB three. The spicy take from Donnie to start it off. Nick, what do you got? All right, so yeah, Lawrence is one. Uh, 
and I don't think anything was proven otherwise in that first preseason game. He looked good to me. Burrow, too. I uh, hope his knee's okay, but, you know, everything he did last year as well, proving to be a good number one pick. Fields is three for me. I still am tooting the Justin Fields horn. I still think he's as physically gifted as he'd have with a QB. I was a big Kyler fan coming out. He's my four. Uh, he was far and away QB one for me in that draft class. I didn't. I actually had Daniel Jones over Dwayne Haskins. Unknown fact. Um, <laughs> Good for you. I didn't like either of them very much. Uh, Zach Wilson's five. Is, you know, again, the ability to throw off platform is so important in this league. And I have Rattler at six because I think of him as him and Wilson as very similar grades. I gave the edge to a guy who, you know, had a, an extra year of playing time. Um, and Wilson, so Rattler could probably probably will hop him by the end of the year in my rankings. But he ends up at six for me. Seven, eight, Tua, uh, then Trey Lance, and then Sam Howell ends up at nine. Uh, not that I, you know, don't like Sam Howell. It's still QB two for me, but I just think in terms of what he's good at, it puts him below a lot of these skill sets that we've seen in past years. Um. All right, here we go. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, one shock. I know to many. Uh, two, Joe Burrow. I had him first overall on my big board. He was a dog, so he's there ahead of Justin Fields, who would have been first on my big board had Trevor Lawrence not existed uh, in the same year. Uh, and then we got Kyler Murray, also a big Kyler Murray guy, but obviously there were questions there, so he's going to be a little lower than those other three guys. Then I got Spencer Rattler popping in his craft. Um, then I got Tua, Devil Hand, uh, Tua Tag of Iloa, turn the ball over, as Donnie nice, nicely said. Um, we're, we're all for Tua slander here on this podcast, at least on my part. Um, then I got Sam Darnold. I was a big Sam Darnold guy. Most, you know, I know he had the, like the small hands. He fumbled a lot, but I had him as QB one, I believe, in that year. Um, and then I'm going Zach Wilson. Sam Howell still just waiting. Um, and then I got Baker. And then I got Sam Howell, which I believe, if my math is correct, that is also 10th. Uh, on this countdown list. So yeah, I got Spencer Rattler as fifth best since 2018 and then Sam Howell down at uh, 10. All right. So mine's, uh, I think kind of similar to you guys, but a little different. So of course, Lawrence, number one, I think Lawrence honestly is the best quarterback prospect ever. Like I, I think he's better than Luck. He's better than Peyton Manning. He's better than John Elway as a prospect. I'm not saying he's going to be better than Peyton Manning or John Elway. I'm saying as a prospect, probably will be better than Andrew Luck. unless something drastically goes wrong. Um, Joe Burrow, number two, I liked him a lot coming out. He had almost a perfect season at LSU. Um, pretty easily number two for me. Three, I actually liked Baker a lot coming out of Oklahoma. I thought he was QB1 in that draft coming out. He had such an amazing career at Oklahoma. I was worried about the offense, but man, he was the best quarterback in the country for like two or three years in a row. So he had a very impressive career. Four fields. Again, Nick, you mentioned it, uh, and Tate too. Loved him. I mean, this guy was number two overall. And honestly, he was closer to Lawrence than he was to Zach Wilson for me, who was three on my board. I love Justin Fields. I think he's going to be a superstar. Honestly, out of all the quarterbacks right now, I feel best about Justin Fields. I don't think Jackson is going to do Trevor Lawrence a lot of favors. Trey Lance is hit or miss for me. Zach Wilson is also hit or miss. I think Justin Fields right now is my bet to have the best career out of all those guys right now. Five, Kyler. Love Kyler coming out of Oklahoma. Only a one-year guy, but man, that one year is special. Six, another Oklahoma guy. There is Spencer Rattler, who is QB1 for me right now. Obviously, this is so early that he could move up or down the list, depending on what happens. Uh, but seven, I got Tua. I love Tua coming out, too. The accuracy was excellent. Eight, Zach Wilson I have at eight. And then Sam Howell is nine for me. So, obviously, you know, not a lot, you know, not as good of a quarterback class as of right now as it was in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. But, you know, this is still a pretty good quarterback class, and Donnie is calling out Malik Willis QB1 right now, which I love. Uh, so, Nick, start us off with – let's go to the offensive tackles now. Who do you uh, – where do you think Evan Neal stacks up in your tackles list? So, Panay is the best tackle uh, the past five years, and I don't actually think it's particularly close. Um, maybe would have liked this – he wasn't bad in his first preseason game, but it was – you know, maybe the switch to the right side needs a little bit of time. But, uh, yes, best tackle for me is him. Two and three from the same class. I was big on Tristan Wirfs. Uh, I think it comes out that so far he's had a pretty good career, so I'm happy about that take. Um, but the combine results and his ability to play up and down the line at Iowa, the way he shut down some USC pass rushers in his final bowl game, to me, were very impressive. Uh, three is Jedrick Wills. Uh, I just thought his production in the SEC was excellent. I didn't care that he was a right tackle. I thought he was his, his uh, 
technique was sound and he had the power necessary to produce early in the league. And then Evan Neal comes in at four for me as a guy who physical traits off the off the map and I think is technically more uh, progressed than most uh, all athleticism prospects, which he isn't, but you know, kind of fits into that shell with those guys. And then my five was Jonah Williams, who to me uh, as a prospect was similar in terms of take to Tristan Wirfs, but didn't have uh, maybe the measurables that Wirfs had in the combine. Um, I also have Penny Sewell, one, and I think the gap from him to like way clear of everything else, like worse to Wills is pretty close in my opinion, um, going back to 2020, and that's where worse is. He's OT2 on this list for me. Um, he was fourth on my board, OT1. Wills was eighth on my board, so he's going to clock in at three. Um, and then I was kind of debating on Mike McGlinchey, Jonah Williams, and Evan Neal as this kind of like who is fourth uh, in this list. Um, and I think I'm just going to settle on McGlinchey and then Evan Neal as fifth of these um, on this list. Um, I don't know. I, I did like McGlinchey, but, you know, that's way back in 2018. And I have, uh, as established, the brain of a goldfish. So I, my memory <laughs> is very poor. Um, but yes, I'm going to go McGlinchey four and then Evan Neal five. Um, once again, like you guys, I have still a one. Um, just like Nick, I don't think it's close. I really don't think it is. Uh, number two, uh, just like you guys, I have Tristan Wives. Um, obviously, Hawkeye fans, so I might be biased there, but <laughs> I thought Tristan Wives was the best tackle in that draft. And it was it just blew my mind that he was the fourth one taken. Um, number three, I have Jedrick Wills. Obviously, dominated the SEC. Was very, very good. And number four, I have Mekhi Becton. Um, I really like Mekhi Becton coming out of Louisville. I just thought his raw size, or not his raw size, his raw athleticism plus his size, it's just ridiculous. Now, um, Evan and uh, Evan Neal is on number five. Now, why I like Becton more, I just think he's a bit better of an athlete. But obviously, I think Evan Neal can easily put me, uh, put me on and be number four by the end of the year. Yeah, that was my comp for... Evan Neal, too, in our videos, but Kai Becton, just like these huge tackles who you think you see that and you're like, okay, he can't move and he actually can move, which was shocking. So, yeah, I don't think he's as freaky. I agree with you, Donnie. But number one, uh, one of the freakiest tackles I've ever seen, Panay Sewell. Like, this guy is the best tackle since, like, Joe Thomas, if you want to even go back that far. Like, this guy was a special, special tackle prospect coming out. Uh, I know the first game didn't look great. Let up a, a sack, if you want to call it that. It was a fringe sack at that against Gregory Rousseau. We'll see. So we're going to have a great career in Detroit for PJ's Lions. Uh, two, I have Jonah Williams, man. I was a big Jonah Williams fan coming out of Alabama. I thought his technique was sound. I thought he was easily a top five pick. Had an up and down career so far. He's battled injuries all his career, but I still think he could be a decent tackle so far. Three, unfortunately, you guys are a lot smarter than me. I had Andrew Thomas as OT1. <laughs> And this dude, oh, this dude. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, oh, I, 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 I very much regret everything from that draft. But uh, <laughs> Andrew Thomas, he was he's not bad. You know, he's, like, no, yeah. he's not good. <laughs> he's, he's definitely not good. We'll see. We'll see how he is. Um, Andrew Thomas, look, he dominated the SEC coming out of Georgia. I love that. I was like, this guy is just pro ready and everything. He's athletic tackle. Uh, four was Tristan Wirfs for me. I love Tristan Wirfs. He's a freak, freak athlete. Uh, the likes of which we haven't seen. And obviously so far, he is phenomenal at Tampa Bay so far. So we'll see how he goes. Five is where I have Evan Neal. I, I'm a little lower on Evan Neal than I thought I would be, honestly. He's got the freakish athleticism, got the freakish size. Just a couple concerns of pass protection. But I think this guy is going to be a really good player and probably a, a, definitely a top 10 pick in the 2022 draft. So let's go to the defensive side of the ball. It kind of wraps up who we did on offense. Defensively, this is a defensive-driven class. Tate, let's start with the defensive tackles. Where does DeMarvin Leal stack up for you? Uh, so we talked about it in the Leal scouting report. Is I, If we're playing him out on edge, I like him a lot less than I do uh, on the interior. Um, but I do not like him better than Quinnen Williams in 2019, uh, Vita Vea in 2018, and I have ahead and then I have Leal checking in um, with Javon Kinlaw running out my top five of the top five interior guys of the last five years three years who is, five years who's the uh who's number three again he cut out a little bit uh Christian Barmore who we all loved and sadly fell to the second round which is a joke I forgot about him. 
Oh, Max, come on. That was just uh, this, this past spring. Thank God I didn't go first. Holy crap. All right, good call, Tate. Good call. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I had Barmore in my top five. He was a little bit – I mean, we liked him in this class, uh, but I, I didn't have him up with a couple other guys. Quinnen was number one for me going back. I mean, he's just been uh, some of the most dominant – interior seasons we've ever seen from a college prospect at least in a half decade uh number two for me is ed oliver um i was all over the ed oliver thing i, I liked quinn Quinn him better but i was certainly one of those people who was during the draft was like i don't want to call him aaron donald but you know, you know <laughs> he's definitely not aaron donald i think we can say that at this point in his career but you know uh you know i, I was i was high on his ability coming out and i actually think demarvin leal is a similar prospect to him coming out i have him third on this list uh, just ahead of Javon Kinlaw, who I think had some pass rush ability, kind of bloomed late in his time in college, and that limited amount of great play, in my opinion, was kind of the reason why I had him a little lower. And then my five was Vita Vea, um, who I liked coming out. Um, I wasn't, like, completely thrilled with him. I was pretty certain before the draft that Washington was going to take him, and then Tampa just ended up being taking an interior lineman they didn't need, and guess what? It worked out. So good for Tampa. Uh, and he was he's five for me, so that rounds it out. So you said Liao was three, and then who was four again? Uh, four was Javon Kinlaw. Oh, Kinlaw, right. My bad. Yeah. Well, who was two again? I apologize. <laughs> Ed Oliver was two. Ed, Ed Oliver. Oliver. Aaron Donald was two, basically. Aaron Donald was two, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what he's saying. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, Corner Williams, number one. Um, I actually said he was going to be Aaron Donald. And um, clearly, I was a bit wrong on that. I think I need to be careful with what I say. Um, <laughs> number two, I had Javon Kinlaw. I liked him so much coming out of college. I had him as a top seven player in the draft. I loved Kinlaw so much. And then number three, I have DeMarvin Leo. Um, just like Tate said, if, if he was out at edge, I, I don't really like him that much at edge. He'd probably be a lot lower on my list if he was at edge. I think he's a much better defensive tackle. At number four, I have... Um, at number four, I have Ed Oliver, and at number five, I have, uh, hold on, at number five, I have, I didn't type anybody, so, uh, I don't know, um, maybe <laughs> Derek Brown. <laughs> Derek, yeah, Derek Brown's a good shout. I, I consider him a lot for this. Um, okay, number one, easily for me, Quinn and Williams. Like, Quinn and Williams, like you guys mentioned, kind of had, like, I'm not going to say it was as good, but it was, like, it was, like, actually, it was as good. It was, like, the Joe Burrow season. For a defensive tackle, where he's like, this guy is literally unblockable. He's unstoppable in the SEC. Uh, and then he was ended up being a third overall pick. And he's been good so far. He had a really good second year. So very encouraging for the Jets. Two, this is a, uh, we all are PFF. I don't know if uh, Donnie is, but we all kind of are PFF guys here. This was a PFF darling coming out of college. Uh, he kind of had an up and down career so far, but I think he'd still be good. Maurice first, the Michigan D tackle. I remember reading, some PFF stats about him. And he was just like killing it in their grades. And I was like, wow, this guy can be really good. Um, and I thought he was really good. And he ended up being whatever. And then finally he had like heart problems too. He's but, better than the league thinks. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but uh, he was number two. Three for me is DeMarvin Leal. I, I think you guys mentioned it. He's just a freak, freak athlete at 280 pounds. Uh, he moves like kind of like an edge, and he can play on the interior too. Such a versatile player. I think he's going to be really good, and we'll see how he is at Texas A&M this year. Four, I just added him to the list. Christian Barmore. He's a top 15 player on my board coming out. Like he was the number two. And you forgot about him, dude. I I literally I think the 2020 <laughs> the 2021 draft I just like forgot about for a second. Uh, <laughs> That's Christian true. Barmore. Yeah, I, we locked out everything. You can't list the top 120 picks off the top of your head right now. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Peach and I actually were talking about it. We're like, dude, if you tell me a player right now, like I could probably tell you maybe his college, not much more than that. Like I, I it, once the draft is over, it's over. Uh, Barmore four, Ken Law was five for me. Uh, I had him over Derek Brown. A lot of people thought Derek Brown was better, and Derek Brown actually ended up going before him. Uh, I just thought Ken Law was just a better prospect coming out of South Carolina. Let's go to this. Will be a fun one. I, I'm very curious. I know Donnie, you like Kayvon Thibodeau a lot. But where does he stack up, man? Because we've had some special edge prospects come out recently. Um, so number one is Chase Young. Um, now I know everybody in here has Chase Young probably is the highest graded prospect ever. Um, for me, it's actually Miles Garrett. Um, I know technically he was 2017, but I 
I had a man crush on Miles Garrett coming out of college, so I just couldn't I couldn't force myself to put Chase Young over him, even though I probably should have. I just didn't because I just didn't want to. But um, yeah, um, if we go if we're going since 2018, number one I have Chase Young, uh, number two I have Nick Bosa, and um, it's a very close between Bosa and Kayvon, but Bosa's ahead of him at number three. I have Kayvon Thibodeau, and then at number four I have um. Bradley Chubb, and then at number five, I have Nick Benito. Ooh, that's a shout. Ooh, like I like that. Well, that's that's a that's a low key spicy meatball right there. Okay? I love like, that. Uh, yeah. Donnie's coming out, man. We're kind of being like a little vanilla with our takes right now. Donnie's got Malik Willis QB one. He's got Nick Benito in his top five. Man, this is this is a good show on it right now, Donnie. I love it. Yeah, I love I love Nick Benito. I I mean, obviously not the best power guy. Uh, maybe just speed, but if he can develop even just some sort of power moves, I think he has a really good shot of um, being maybe not better, but as good as Kevon Thibodeau. Wow. I love it. I like Heard it here first, folks. <laughs> He's the next guy who can cover. It's always, always Yeah, fun. that's good. That's always good. Um. All right, so yeah, Chase Young, uh, edge one on this list, uh, obviously. That's what I was waiting for, by the way. I just want to see what the Ohio State kid was going to say about Bosa versus Young. But, you know. uh, <laughs> Chase Young, um, different gravy, okay? Just a just a different beast, um, but the same animal at the same time. Shout out that one commercial. Um, then I got Nick Bosa, obviously. Uh, I do like Kayvon Thibodeau of the uh, podcast members, I am probably the highest on Thibodeau still, so he's checking in at three. Then I got Bradley Chubb, and then I got Quiddy Pay, who was 14th on my big board this Ooh. past year, and I do like, I I Michigan did like, um, I know, I know, I know, it's sacrilegious of me to say this, but I did <laughs> like Quiddy Pay, so he's checking in at fifth on my edge list here. Wow, that's oh, crazy. Yeah, I didn't expect that from Tate and all people. And hey guys, I'm sorry, it's sacrilegious. I know. There are so many edge players in this past, especially that one draft 2019 where it was just like all D-line that I unfortunately don't have Quiddy Pay in my top five. But yeah, Chase Young I had over Nick Bosa. I do actually think coming out that Miles Garrett was a better prospect than Chase Young. I agree with you on that, Donnie. Um, I thought he just was more well-rounded and ready to play in the NFL. Um, you know, We're making PJ upset right now because he's a big Nick Bosa guy, but uh, I have him behind Chase Young at two. Um, three and four, I had a bit of a debate in my head. And again, I kind of like whenever I was close on prospects and it was one from this year, one from the past, I gave the edge to the guy from the past. So I have Bradley Chubb three and Cave on four. I kind of have those guys as like similar coming out um, in terms of grading. Uh, five for me ended up being Josh Allen, who I loved a lot coming out of college. Uh, and I still think has a lot to show at the NFL level, had some injuries. And I think this past year, I don't know if you're wrong. I think he missed some games and that kind of hurt him. And I just want to say really quick that my sixth with Montez Sweat. So, you know, oh, always cool when you have your first and sixth best prospect. <laughs> so. um, all right, number one, and I actually disagree with uh, with Donnie and Nick here. Chase Young is the best edge I've ever seen come out. Uh, I, I think he, just the technique, the raw athleticism, which Miles Garrett obviously had too. And Miles Garrett obviously is probably maybe one of the best edges, if not the best edge in the NFL right now. Uh, he's that special. Chase Young, I think, will be another special, special guy. Splitting hairs. I'm not saying he's definite, but Chase Young is my top edge I've ever seen. Two, probably my third best edge I've ever seen come out after Miles Garrett. Nick Bosa. Loved him coming out of Ohio State. He was kind of hurt that last year, which he might have had a year where he pushed above Chase Young in my board, but he just only played like two games that year, and then he sat out the rest of the season. If he played the whole year, maybe he's the best edge I've ever seen or at least second against Miles Garrett, but didn't play, but I still love him coming out. And he looked great in his rookie year. We'll see how he is in year three after missing basically his whole se second season with Torrey ACL. Three, had to put Kayvon Thibodeau here. I, I like Thibodeau. Um, I know Nick and I are kind of lower on him than Tate and Donnie are, but Kayvon is just that raw athlete, man. Mike Renner, the PFF guy, you compared him to a raw Miles Garrett. I think that's a good comp. Um, I said Robert Quinn who's kind of had an up-and-down career. But, man, when he was on in St. Louis, he was, like, the best edge in the league. That's what Kayvon could be, but also he could have that roller coaster career where he's like, oh, he's the best, and then also he's not that good anymore. Like, it's kind of like that with Kayvon Thibodeau. He's sort a of raw player, but, man, those tools are special. For Josh Allen from Kentucky, loved him coming out. Uh, the only Josh Allen I really loved as a prospect coming out because uh, the other one, the quarterback, wasn't really a big fan of, and I look like an idiot now. 
And the other Josh Allen, who's the edge rusher, doesn't really look that great in Jacksonville. So maybe I suck at this whole scouting thing. But uh, we'll see. Josh Allen, number four. Donnie, you called it out, man. Good shout. Nick Benito, number five. I I love this guy. And Donnie, I've been posting these like TikToks, uh, the w- one-minute scouting reports. Every single one from like number six on, Donnie be like, where the F is Nick Benito? And <laughs> he had to wait a little bit, but I finally got him in there. He mentioned it, man. If this guy puts on weight, because he's like 235 right now, which is like a linebacker size. Chris he puts Rump. on weight. Yeah. If he puts he literally it's Chris Rump, basically. Uh, just a little bit better, I think. But puts on weight, oh. man. He's, he was the best pass rusher in the country last year. And if he gets up to 245, 250, and he's as good as last year, I think he might be edge one over Kayvon Thibodeau, which is an insane thing to say right now. A lot of people don't think so. But Nick Benito is a special player. He's being very underrated right now in this process this one is going to be fun and it is the cornerbacks list that we've got so nick kick us off who are your top cornerbacks since 2018 so stingley is the best corner i've seen since ramsey uh he's one he has a legit chance to be one on my big board like over qbs uh, i just look let's see this it's this guy can play receiver or not like that he can yeah. and, uh, <laughs> like it's it's and that's crazy. with positional value too yeah. you know like it's, that's how good this kid is like damn. uh two for me was okuda uh i loved jeff okuda coming out i still love jeff okuda i think he's he's got everything he needs to succeed fully in the nfl i also thought he was an insanely safe pick so i'm just floored at how detroit has managed to mess it up come on bj um <laughs> I, I'm hoping I, I want to see him turn it around because I really just in terms of length, athleticism, smarts, uh, just character. I thought he was everything coming out and it hasn't worked. Out. Another guy who's similar. I just had a little bit lower because I just didn't think he was as good of an athlete was Patrick Sertan. Uh, yeah, I know we have some, uh, you know, Max is going to talk about how much he likes Sertan here, uh, but I did have him below Okuda. Denzel Ward for me was four. Um, and five, actually, this draft, Kyer Elam ends up being five. Uh, I don't love Elam, but he I just didn't find a whole lot of corners after that that I really love. So Elam ends up being five on the list. OK, so we were like dangerously close to having Homer Tate in like full effect and having Jeff Okuda <laughs> and Denzel Ward dangerously high on this list. Um, <laughs> but uh, cooler heads have prevailed and Derek Stingley is one on this list. I think you have to go back to Patrick <laughs> Peterson to find a better corner prospect. Yeah. After Stingley, I'm also going to go Jalen Ramsey 2017. Um, and then I got Okuda. I just like Nick said, I thought he was a really safe draft pick. I didn't think he would be like a real, you know, mess up of a draft pick, but, uh, here we are. And when it's potentially that, which, you know, is sad to see. Then I got Denzel Ward. And then I got Pat Sertan, um, and I believe that is five. Um, so, yeah, Stingley, Ramsey, Okuda, Ward, Sertan. Well, Ramsey was 2017, I think, right? Yes. So oh, I did go back out no, in 2018. 2016. Oh, 2016. 2016. Right, yeah, it was 2016. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wait, so Tate, I just want to I just want to point this out, man. You said he was the best. Stingley was the best since, like, Pat Pete. Does that mean you're saying that LSU is DBU over Ohio State? Uh, assuredly not. Look at the numbers. The numbers don't <laughs> lie. Uh, don't believe this uh, lie that Max is now trying to spread. Tight end you, Iowa. There we go. Um. Yeah. Um. I I agree with Tate. I think Derek Stanley's the best cornerback prospect since Patrick Peterson. Go Cardinals, by the way. Um. <laughs> Um, I love Stanley so much. My only thing I hate so much, I just don't understand why he's playing wide receiver. Okay, I get it. He wants to like potentially be the first ever whatever. I, I don't like it. <laughs> the first, I don't like it. Yeah. That's a good the first ever whatever. I, I, I mean, he's not I wrong. I mean, I get it. I don't like it because I just don't want to see him get hurt. He's way too talented of a cornerback to possibly mess up his career like this. But I will say, if he does prevail as one of the top wide receivers in the country, I don't think it's crazy to say that he might go number one to the Texans. But they'll probably take a quarterback. But I think it could be in the conversation. But uh, Mm -hmm. Stanley won. Number two, I had Jeff Okuda, unfortunately. Matt Patricia isn't very smart. So um, he didn't really use him the right way. (laughs) Hopefully he can have a bounce back here because I really like Jeff Okuda coming out of Ohio State. I thought he was easily the best corner in the country that year outside of Derek Stanley. 
And then at number three, I have... <coughs> sorry. At number three, I have J.C. Horn. Uh, I thought J.C. Horn was easily the best man press corner in the draft in 2021. I did like Sertan a lot, but J.C. Horn to me, he just... His game against, I believe it was Seth Williams against Auburn, was mm-hmm. a masterpiece. That mm-hmm. game was so much fun to watch. And when I saw that, I was like, yeah, J.C. Horn, is he's the real deal. Mm-hmm. And um, easily should, in my opinion, he was well worth an eighth overall pick to Carolina. I know that pick got a little bit of questions. I was fine with it. They needed a corner, and they got the best one, in my opinion. And at number four, I have Denzel Ward. He's been a... Uh, I think we can all say he's probably a top 10 corner in the league right now. He's been doing a pretty good job. And at number five, I have um, <coughs> at number five, I have uh, Patrick Sertan. Okay. Uh, number one, Stingley. Uh, you guys mentioned it. I'm not going to go over it too much. He's the best cornerback prospect. You know, he's in that vein of, like we say, like the Trevor Lawrence almost of corners, where it's like this guy is a special cornerback prospect. Two, the guy who I thought was the best corner since Jalen Ramsey until Stingley this year, Pat Sertan. I was all over this kid, man, coming out of Alabama. The big question mark for me and everyone else was, okay, how athletic is he? Because J.C. Horn seemed to have beaten him in athleticism. Pat Sertan went out in that pro day, man, and he lit it up. And that, to me, that answered all questions that I had about Pat Sertan. So he was, I think, a top five player on my board that year. Loved it. And he had a... I'm not going to overreact too much, but that preseason game against the Vikings, he was unreal. He had a pass breakup and a pick six, which two targets, hard to glean much off the two targets, but still, that's a pretty good two targets there for a rookie corner. Three, Jeff Okuda. I, I liked Okuda a lot coming out of Ohio State. I think it was a little bit lower on him than most people, but I still had him in the top three on my board. Uh, I liked Okuda a lot. I think he was a very talented corner, really athletic. Uh, I still think he can turn it around in Detroit. I, I don't think it's over just yet, although... PJ is uh, texting us, I think, daily almost saying, like, yeah, it's not looking great for the entire Detroit Lions team, but Jeff Okuda as well. For Denzel Ward was a big fan of him coming out of Ohio State, too. He's played really well in Cleveland. Um, I loved him coming out of Ohio State in 2018. Uh, the fourth overall pick when they got Baker and Denzel Ward. I was a big fan of that draft for Cleveland, and it's worked out and for both of them so far. Five. Nick stole this one, man. I thought I was going to get sexy and do Kyrie Elam at five, and you guys were like, whoa, Kyrie Elam's five right now. The press coverage, I love. Uh, he's such a versatile player. Not the best athlete. He's not a Derek Stingley Jr. athlete. That'll be the big thing with him coming out, probably his athleticism, as well as his tackling and run defense. But he is a really, really good coverage player for two years in the SEC, like Derek Stingley Jr. So Kyrie Elam is number six on my 2022 big board right now, and number five corner since 2018. Let's finish it off with the safeties. Tate, what do you have for Kyle Hamilton? Where does he rack up there? Um, so Kyle Hamilton, if we're going back to 2018, is the best safety since 2018. I think you can make the argument that Jamal Adams in 2017 was maybe a better prospect. Um, ended up going six overall, which is probably the range of Kyle Hamilton this coming draft class. So yes, Kyle Hamilton won for me. Then I'm going to Minka in 2018, followed by Derwin James in the same draft class. Then I'm going back to this year, Trayvon Morig, who I, I liked and Nick liked. I'm sure will be on Nick's list. Um, and then I'm going Xavier McKinney. I don't know. I, I wasn't really inspired by a lot of the options for fifth safety. Um, you can maybe be Javon. I'm sure Mac. Yeah. Hamilton, Minka, Derwin, Trayvon Morig, Xavier McKinney. All right. I, I am going to say that uh, Kyle Hamilton was the best safety since Sean Taylor. Uh, you know, because you got to put that one out there. He was uh, excellent coming out. Uh, number two, also, I had Minka over Derwin James. Uh, I thought his versatility as a coverage player, and I just thought his the way he moved was more, you know, he was potentially going to play corner out of college. I just thought it was safer. I thought the coverage ability was there than what Derwin was coming out with. But I had Derwin at three. Like, they were both excellent safeties coming out of time. Trayvon, for me, is four. I uh, loved him coming out. Uh, still waiting to see how he's going to do with the Raiders. I didn't actually watch that preseason game, so I might have to go look at how well he played. I'm not certain. And five for me uh, was a debate between Jordan Battle and Xavier McKinney in this draft. And, like, I liked McKinney, but I think Battle is a little more coverage upside. Uh, I, I'm, and this doesn't say a whole lot about Battle. I think it just says more about, like, the type of safety prospects we've had recently. There just haven't been a ton of good ones. But uh, Battle, to me, I think has ability to be that kind of versatile coverage piece with size. 
Um, yeah, just like you guys, Kyle Hamilton's probably the best safety prospect since Sean Taylor. Um, rest in peace, by the way. Um, K- Kyle Hamilton is absolutely amazing. I don't think there should be any debate that he is the best safety prospect since 2018. Um, number two, I have uh, Minka. Don't think I need an explanation there. Minka is already one of the best safeties, if not the best safety in all of football. Number three, I have Xavier McKinney. I really, really like Xavier McKinney coming out of Alabama um, in uh, 2020. I thought he should have been a first-round pick, and the fact that he wasn't, um, I called my friend after the draft, and he's a Bengals fan. I called him, and I said, if you don't take Xavier McKinney, you have problems because you need to take him. So (laughs) I really like Xavier McKinney. Number four, I have Derwin James. Hopefully he can stay healthy because I think when he's healthy, he might be the best safety in the league because his rookie season was just phenomenal. And then at number five, um, wait, five? Yeah. Yeah, five. Oh, so. uh, yeah. And then number five, it was really close between uh, Trevon Morig and Javon Holland. But at the end of the day, I did go with uh, Trevon Morig. All right. So I actually have a couple names that we haven't said yet on this, which is oh, going wow. to be it's interesting. Gonna Tate's going to yell at me. Don't, don't say, just don't say Trell Edmonds. Just don't say no, Trell no, no. Donnie, I despise, I'm a Steelers fan. I despise that pick when it happened. Okay, the you. only reason Terrell Edmonds was even at that draft was for his little brother Tremaine to be drafted. And all of a sudden, Steelers called in the first round. Oh, all right. Yeah. So safeties now. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, number one. You guys mentioned it best since at least Eric Berry. Probably best since Sean Taylor, RIP. Uh, he's just special, man. I, he just He looks – he's 6'4", 220. So he looks like Isaiah Simmons, but he's actually a safety because Isaiah Simmons is kind of more of a hybrid linebacker safety. Kyle Hamilton is a safety. 6'4", 220, can probably run in like the low 4'4s too. This guy's a freak athlete, was excellent in coverage for two years at Notre Dame. Really good run defender, really good tackle. He explodes into the backfield. Kyle Hamilton's a freak, freak athlete. I love him at Notre Dame right now. My number four prospect in this draft. Pay safeties and draft them highly because this is the most underrated position in the NFL. Two, Donnie, completely agree with you. He is the best safety in the NFL probably when healthy. Derwin James loved him coming out of Florida State. They had it. Ramsey, Homer. They, <laughs> I'm not in Florida State, man. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. Uh, they, had, <laughs> they had Ramsey coming out uh, of Florida State. And then I remember when Ramsey was coming out, they said, okay, we have another guy coming in. Like this, this freshman is unreal. And it was Derwin James. And he ended up being that next superstar Florida defensive back for them. So I love Derwin James. I think he's going to be a great safety in the NFL. Hopefully he stays healthy. Three, Minka Fitzpatrick. Again, the coverage versatility, like Nick mentioned, he could play corner if you want him to. He wasn't really good at corner. And finally, when he got traded from Miami to the Steelers, they put him at safety where he belongs, and he's flourished and been one of the best safeties in the league since then. Four and five. Here we go. Ready? Ready to take four. Grant Delpit. Oh no, Grant Delpit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, great, but oh no. <laughs> I was a big Grant Delpit guy oh. coming out of LSU. Listen, Max, he had so many issues. Yeah, the the run yeah. defending was ter- was bad. The tackling was was worse. You um, could argue the coverage was bad was too. So, no, the was coverage so, was so he was so good in twenty eighteen, mm-hmm. and then twenty nineteen happened. Like. Yeah, but you still he, listen. This guy, we haven't seen anything yet. He tore his Achilles. It's his True. first year back from the Achilles, so we haven't literally have not. This is rookie year basically for the Browns. But yeah. I think this guy can be with his size and athleticism can be a tight end eraser at the next level. Put him in man coverage against tight ends. I think he's really good in coverage. Love Grant out, but yeah, the, the tackling is not good and the run defense is not very good. But this guy is, I think, really good in coverage. Five. My guy from last year was a top 20 prospect on my big board, Javon Holland. Uh, he looked great for Miami in that first preseason game. I'm so excited to watch him play. Hopefully he and uh, our boy Tro Williams get some time there in Miami. But Javon Holland is a freak athlete. He a uh, little bit on the skinnier side, but he's a ball hawk man. And I, I was such a big fan of him coming out of Oregon. I know he opted out of that last year, but I thought he was the best safety pretty comfortably. I like Merrick, but I think pretty comfortably Javon Holland was the number one safety. Before we wrap up, guys, I'm going to give you guys a chance now. Is there any other prospects that you think should even be mentioned in like the same vein of like the best since 2018? The only one I can think of is like Linderbaum, right? With like Quentin Nelson for interior line. That's yeah, that's pretty much it's pretty much it to be honest. Probably the second best interior offensive lineman since 2018. Yeah, that's all I can think of too. I don't know if you guys. 
yeah, that, this, this 2022 draft is not filled with uh, the superstars that we had in 2021. Let's just put it that way. But uh, the defensive class, man, you know, they got Stingley, Hamilton, Thibodeau. This is going to be fun. A lot of fun. And Evan Neal and Rattler and Howell, obviously, too. So that was it. That was our video. Hopefully, you know, you guys stuck around for the whole thing because we had a ton of fun making this one. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment what you think about our rankings. Where do these 2022 guys stack up right now? Obviously, this is a video that's probably too early to make because there's a whole season to be played this year. But who cares? We're doing it anyway. Uh, and these rankings might really drastically change after the season's over. Comment what video you want us to do next. Follow our Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, at Boomer Bus Draft. Leave a review on our podcast. Check out the website below. Hit our merch store. And, of course, please go to TikTok. Follow our guy, Donnie, at Pick and Spreads on TikTok. Get him to 20,000 followers or whatever. This guy's a monster on TikTok. So, please check him out. He's the best. So, for Tate Sigworth, Nick Miriam, and Donnie, I'm Max Chadwick. Have a great night.